pregame.com. Big Ten basketball on Sunday as Wisconsin travels to Champaign to take on Illinois. He's Brian Leonard. I'm Scott Spritzer. We're talking about this game before Illinois' Thursday night contest against the Penn State Nittany Lions, and we project a line of about one and a half uh, Wisconsin laying the point and a half in this particular basketball game. Uh, as they go into the game against Penn State, here's what we got out of Illinois. Their starting point guard, Sam uh, Maniscalco, didn't play in the three previous games of Illinois, but yet they were able to win those three games. And here's a Bradley transfer who's all of a sudden, and I'm a big mid-major fan, but he's stepping up and taking over the starting point guard position for Illinois this year. And I thought they looked better the last three games with him on the sideline in street clothes. And guys like Brandon Paul and DJ Richardson were able to handle the, the ball more, more often than they would have if Maniscalco would have been on the floor. And we saw Brandon Paul have that phenomenal outing against Ohio State scoring 43 points without Maniscalco out there. It almost like freed up guys around the perimeter as far as their guards were concerned when they didn't have to watch him dribbling the basketball and looking for the open man. So we'll see if he plays on Thursday night, and then that kind of changes the attitude on the handicap for Sunday's game because if he plays against Penn State and has a so-so game and they want to start him again against Wisconsin, I think it's a detriment rather than a positive for Illinois if he's on the floor more than 20 minutes. Yeah, very well. Could be. And you talked about, you know, it's going to be fresh in everybody's mind how Illinois upset Ohio State. Sure. But keep in mind, before that, they only beat Nebraska by five. Mm -hmm. Minnesota they had to go to overtime to beat Minnesota. And then they only beat Cornell by four. And being that we live in Las Vegas, and, I don't, and I'm not a big watcher of games, there's just too many teams. I don't right. want to see a team one time and it look great, and then all of a sudden I think they're great all year. That's right. a problem you tend to make. Um, I saw both these games. I watch all the UNLV games. They played both of these teams, Wisconsin and Illinois. Mm -hmm. Now, they beat Illinois very soundly, and they lost to Wisconsin. So there's, there's more of a situation where there's not that big of a gap between these two teams, obviously, because we expect the line to be about one and a half here. Sure. But I was just not impressed at all with Illinois. I know they got that guy, Leonard. I, I, one, one name I remember. He, he's one of their better players. But, uh, you know, it's a situation. Wisconsin actually leads the country in defending inside the three-point line, 35.3%. Mm -hmm. Excellent defensive team. And Illinois, though, they're, most of their players tend to score from the inside. Sure. So it's one of those games we just got done talking about, a similar game with uh, Texas mm -hmm. and Kansas. But it, it all comes down to can these guys make the, make the baskets underneath, you know, I'm not, I'm not a guy who makes a lot of numbers when it comes to totals in college basketball, but this is going to be a low-scoring game. You would think so. Yeah. You know, 113 points against Nebraska. Now, I know Nebraska sets college basketball back <laughs> about 45 years with Doc Sadler as coach. Uh, kudos to them for knocking off Indiana the other night. But, you know, here's the problem with backing Wisconsin, and I like him in this spot in all likelihood after seeing what Illinois does against Penn State. But, man, I tell you, I was posted on the forum here at pregame uh, last week, and I said it's kind of like, I'm thinking rather, instead of handicapping games and betting games, or maybe on the side, not leaving the handicapping field, but open up a LASIK office in Madison, because this team had a back-to-back -back performance where they went 8 of 50 from area code 3. They lost both games against Iowa and Michigan State. They lost a third game in a row to Michigan, but you could kind of see them coming out of that shooting funk. They were 7 for 20. It's a decent night from area code 3 against Michigan, but lost the game. Then they come out against Nebraska. They only win 50 to 45, and I know Nebraska likes to make them ugly as far as their games are concerned, but they outscored Nebraska 18 to 2 from the free throw line. They were playing in Madison. They had 24 free throw attempts to Nebraska's two, and yet they only won by five at home, and I looked at their three-point shooting. They regressed again, two of 18 from behind the arc. Then they come out against Northwestern. They can't miss their 12 for 23 from the arc. So it's a very tough team to judge. Here's what I know. They missed John Lauer, no doubt from last year. He was their top perimeter shooter last year. They've got to me a little bit of an overrated coach in Bo Ryan. He's good. He's not great. I don't like the fact that this team is too satisfied with winning if they are the first team to score 55 points in a contest. That bothers me, especially when you're laying points, although this number uh, will be small. So, But breaking down how this team is going to shoot from night to night from area code three is really tough to do. Yeah, it's interesting. In fact, when you're handicapping these games, you have to really get into the box scores. Because mm -hmm. just going back to them, when, when uh, Wisconsin played UNLV, Wisconsin had the one guy get hot from yep. the outside. I think he had hit eight three-pointers in that game. The following game, he was shut out from the three-point line. Right. Um, going into that San Diego State game, you know, they had the two losses. They were both burned by a guy who got hot from the outside. So when you're handicapping as the season goes on, go back and look at how these teams lost because any, anybody at this level can shoot from the outside. Sure. You know, if you're a guard, you should be a pretty good shooter from the outside. So, you know, 
it, it's a coin flip a lot of the times. I mean, a three-pointer, you're going to hit 33% of the time or something mm -hmm. in that general range. But just go and look and see, are these, if you're able to watch the games, are these guys open when they're taking the shots or mm -hmm. are they covered? I do that a lot when I want to watch NBA games to see the sure. spreading and the, and the, the formatting of the offense there. So, so if a guy's open and he's missing the shots, at least you know the second half, a lot of this I do for mm -hmm. second half betting, is you know that shot right there, it was a good shot. He just happened to miss it. Right. So, you know, as opposed to a guy who's got a guy right in his face and he happens to make it. So that's, that's a big advantage you get out of watching those games for second half betting. I'm going to change the subject just for a second because you brought in the NBA. Did you, I don't know if you watched the Wednesday night battle between uh, Indiana and Sacramento. Indiana goes into the fourth quarter with a 14-point lead. They've been facing a man-to-man -man all night. Sacto drops into his zone. Indiana scores eight fourth quarter points and loses the game by four. I hate the zone defense. Of course, if I had Sacramento, I would have loved it. Right. But I hate the zone defense in the NBA. But you're right. When you watch, I think it's a great way to see how teams, it, it's almost like going within the numbers to see what's really happening. Because if Wisconsin goes 12 for 23 against Northwestern, and Northwestern's slow at getting out to the guy with the ball and defending and closing out on jump shots, then obviously Whiskey's got a great advantage. But if they go 2 for 18 against Nebraska and you got guys who are constantly in their shirts, at least they had a reason for having an off night. Now, the Badgers have owned DJ Richardson, one of the top players for Illinois, over the last couple of years. Richardson goes into Thursday night's game with nursing a wrist injury. The player that really hurt Wisconsin in these, when these two teams matched up is no longer there, and that's Dimitri McKamey. And because he's no longer there, I think the way they've been able to defend Richardson, they're going to be able to do it again and get over the top in Champaign on Sunday. He's Brian Leonard. I'm Scott Spritzer. That's Wisconsin, Illinois on Sunday. Be sure to check out our Big 12 matchup for Saturday, and that's the matchup between Kansas and Texas.